Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the new sprite tag feature that is part of the latest beta release of TextMesh Pro. Now this latest release is available to all registered users of the product and it's available on the TextMesh Pro user form. So let's take a look at this new sprite tag feature and what it does. So if you take a look on screen you'll see that we have a bunch of text and Along with this text, we have a bunch of graphical elements. Well, the new sprite tag feature allows you to add graphics in line with the text or add sprites in line with the text. And what's really nice is that these graphical elements are treated by TextMesh Pro's layout uh, engine as just another character. So they will be affected by everything else that affects the text. So as I resize them, they always remain proportional to the text itself. They were wrapped just as if they were any other character. So for example, if I disable auto sizing and adjust character spacing, you'll see that they get adjusted automatically. If I change alignment, they'll align like, you know, as you expect. And if I even choose italic, they'll be affected by the italic tag, for example. So let's dial this back and start from scratch to take a closer look. So I'm going to start with a new scene. I'm going to add a new text mesh pro object by going to create UI and text mesh pro text. So now we're using the new UI and canvas system. Let's zoom into our text object and we'll type something like uh, this is an example of sprites of using sprites. Let's enable word wrapping and we're going to throw a few sprites in there. So I'll put them at some random location. Okay, Sprite equals zero. So uh, the way you add a sprite is you just type the tag sprite equal uh, zero would be the index of the sprite I'm trying to reference. Uh, and then I'm going to add another one here. Sprite equal four. And then we'll add one at the end. So when you type the word sprite the first time, just like when you create a new text mesh pro object and you don't assign a font, the Arial SDF font is assigned by default. When you add a sprite and you don't make any references to anything, a default sprite asset will be used. So the first time the sprite tag is encountered, a new component will be added to the object, which is an inline graphic manager. And since we didn't reference a sprite, it will use the default sprite asset that is referenced here. Now this sprite asset can be uh, located, it's located in the text mesh pro folder in resources in sprites. Okay, and this sprite asset contains the various sprites that I'm using right now. Now if we take a look at this, and I'll polish the look of this component, but right now it does what it's supposed to do, which is um, it allows us to reference the sprite asset and whatever texture is being used by that sprite asset. Uh, and in the end, this component will be just a single line, which is the sprite asset itself. Now, when this component is added, it will automatically add a child to the text mesh per object. And why is that? Well, the new canvas renderer, unlike the mesh renderer, only supports one material per mesh. So since our text is using one material or texture, then we wouldn't be able to add the sprites themselves. So in order to be able to do that, we create a sub-object. So the main text mesh pro object contains the mesh of the characters, and then this inline graphic child contains the mesh of all the different sprites that are being used. So even if we had 50 sprites, all of them would be contained in the same mesh. So in this case, as soon as you use the sprite feature, you're going to have one draw call for the main text and then another draw call for all the other sprites. Now, if you have multiple text objects that are all referencing the same sprites, then all of that is going to batch as well, which is kind of nice. So having covered this part, let's take a look at how do we create a sprite asset and how do we adjust the position of these different sprites. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to a texture here. Actually, let me delete this real quick and let me delete. Uh, I should have done that before I made the video, but let me delete the current sprites and go apply. Okay, forget what I just showed. Okay, 
So we're going to pick a texture. So I imported this texture in Unity. And once you import it, you select that you want it to be a 2D and UI sprite. Okay. Then I selected the sprite mode to multiple. And I basically opened the sprite editor. Now, once I'm in the sprite editor, let me uh, zoom around. We've got our different sprites here. And there's different ways that we can slice them. Right? I could go to slice and choose automatic and then uh, choose the pivot, let's say uh, center or bottom left or whatever, and then choose slice and it would slice the sprites automatically. But for the first demo, I'm actually going to do it manually. So let me delete what Unity just did and I'm going to select them by hand. So I'm going to pick this thing here first and I'll trim it and Unity automatically assigns it a name. Um, and it knows its coordinates. I'm going to then pick this character and trim it and then pick Pac-Man and do the same thing. Now, the pivot point is really important because it determines where the sprite will be drawn relative to the baseline of the text. So right now, if the letter A, let's say the bottom of the letter was here, this would be drawn lower than the letter. So if I wanted it to be adjusted at baseline, I'd move my pivot point down here. And if I wanted to be where a normal letter is, I'd have to shift it right here. So let me actually do that and show a minor issue with the uh, sprite editor. So now that I've moved the pivot, Unity has already given a name to this sprite. Let me actually select it and copy paste to show what's going to happen. So now if I come here to adjust the pivot, like the vertical pivot is fine. I want it here horizontally. I'm going to change this to zero. See how Unity wiped the name here? Um, you actually want to try to preserve the names because as you edit the sprite asset to add more characters, you don't want these names to be overwritten, right? So let me paste it back and, and do that. So make sure when you edit the sprites that you pay attention to Unity wiping the names for whatever reason. But anyway, so this one here, we adjusted the pivot. For these other guys, I left it centered. So I'm not going to change it yet. And I'm going to click Apply. And when that is done, Unity has our texture and it created three sub-objects, which are the sprites themselves. So now we want to create our sprite asset. So how do we create it? Right click on it, go to create and choose the text mesh pro sprite asset. Half of it is off the screen right now, or you could go to asset again, make sure you select the texture, go to asset, create and text mesh pro sprite asset. And it's created our sprite asset here with the three sprites that we added. Now let's say we had sliced, you know, 500 sprites. Uh, then this page count here would show how many pages of sprites we have. Previous and next allows you to navigate through them. And shift and next or previous moves 10 page uh, at a time forward or backwards. So that makes it easier to navigate through them. So now that we have this new sprite asset, let's assign it to this object. So I'm going to go here, pick the object, navigate to the sprite asset, and choose the new one that we created. Now, the two other smiley faces disappeared simply because we're referencing sprite four and six. And if we look at this new asset, the ID is basically zero, one, and two. So if we want the rat figurine, it would be one. And then Pac-Man is two. Okay. Now, if we look at the alignment, we can see how this one's aligned fairly well, but these other two are clearly not aligned where we want them. So what I'm going to do is let me remove the space right there. And let me actually go right up here and remove the extra space between them. So let's go to our sprite asset. So in the sprite asset, we have the ID. This is what we're going to reference the sprite by. And currently, you can only reference the sprite with an ID. But I'm going to add functionality that allows you to reference them by name as well. And that way, if you keep your names unique, as you add more and remove them, as long as you look them up by names, everything will be fine. And that's going to be added in subsequent releases. The X, Y, width, and height represent the position of the sprite inside the atlas or the texture. X, O, X, Y are basically the X and Y offset. Advance 
is how much space we're going to add automatically after the sprite. And SF is for the scale factor, which allows us to control the scale. So in the case of this character, let's just move it here to see where we end up, you know, eyeballing our, our uh, pivot point. And as you can see, it's kind of wrong. So um, I actually prefer to align them this way. And let's go back to zero. And since we I removed the space after and in front, this allows me to know that, look, you know, it's, it's well positioned at zero in the middle anyway. So this is a good position. Let's go do the same thing for this one here. And let's show one of the new tags that was also added in Text Mesh Pro. So if I select the text here, there's a new tag, alpha equal, that allows me to control the alpha of characters or words. And you cancel alpha by using slash color. So this way I just made it transparent. It's going to make it easier to position it relative to our text. Again, the positioning is relative to the baseline of your text. So in this case, I want to move it up and have it, you know, fairly close to where the shadow on our text already uh, shows up. And I'll actually move it like right here. So this is all good. And if, as you can see here, because the pivot was actually on this one right there, I didn't have to move the X offset much. But because this guy, the pivot is here, obviously the X offset on the X is quite a bit because we had to move from this point roughly all the way here and vertically we had to shift it up. Okay, so when you're creating your sprite asset, in all honesty, I don't really pay attention anymore to the pivot point because if you're using like you have like 500 sprites, um, you're going to have to basically go in and tweak them uh, based on how you want them, you know, to show up in the text. So advanced determines how much space is going to be added uh, after it, just like a character. The, ex the advanced is... Uh, by default, the width of the character, and SF is the scale. It's kind of hard to control with the mouse to have like a smooth movement, but this allows me to control the scaling of it. And as you can see, the scaling is relative to where it is drawn from, including the offset that we set up. Okay, so it's kind of nice, and we can position it where we want it. I'll leave it at scale one. Um, and Mr. Pac-Man will do the same thing, kind of eyeballing, you know, where we want it to be, which is about here, and we'll move it up like so. Now, how would we add more sprites into this? Let's actually remove our alpha, which is right there. And we don't need the slash color at the end, which is good, and we'll add our spaces back. And the reason I deleted the space was it makes it easier to align visually when there's letters against them because you just need to center them in between them. Okay, so how would we add the extra sprites? Well, we would go back to our texture, open the sprite editor, and add the extra ones. So a quick way to add them is I could go splice, automatic, and choose the safe mode. That way it won't delete what's already existing and hit slice and it will automatically add the other ones. And then I'm gonna go apply. And once you do apply, and I go back, so now it's added all the new sprites in, you know, as sub objects, but our sprite asset hasn't been updated yet. So in order to update it, I click it, and I will actually create a new sprite asset on top of the existing one. And when you do so, it won't override the existing stuff. Actually, what did I do here? I think I missed a step, hold on. Yeah, I think I, I did it on the asset itself as opposed to on the texture. So now it's added the new ones. And since these guys already existed, it did not overwrite them. As a matter of fact, although we created the sprite asset on top of the existing one, it actually preserved all of our values that we had set here. So when you update the asset on top of the existing one, it simply looks at whether or not it exists. If it already exists, it will adjust where the offsets are, but it won't touch, I mean, the UV, if anything change, but it won't change the values here. So that way, whatever changes or manual tweaks we have done, they'll be preserved. Now, here's our three new sprites that we added, and they're inside of our uh, 
atlas now so we could reference them like five is the Twitter icon now obviously it will be not positioned correctly but we could go in and adjust it you know by hand any way that we want so this gives you a good feel for how you uh, can use the sprite tag how you will create your sprite assets how you're going to edit the different values inside the sprite asset actually you can see page one of two I guess there's an extra one on the previous page there uh, so I guess we get to show that part now the last thing I want to show is let's go back to our um, I added a new demo scene which is the inline graphics and sprites right here and what I wanted to do is show how uh, in this demo scene there's an extra little script called teletype here and if I enter play mode you're going to see how we're revealing the text one character at a time including the sprites and if you pay close attention again on the next loop take a look at the last sprite and you'll notice that this guy actually blinks and goes back to normal and what I'm doing is simply substituting the sprite that's in the string back there but obviously you could arrange your sprite asset and your texture to have like an animation or something and then you could be uh, dynamically changing those characters to cycle through an animation which would be pretty cool so anyway so this is a quick overview not so quick I guess at 16 minutes but this was an overview of the new sprite tag feature in text mesh pro again this is in the latest beta release uh, it's available to all registered users of the product and it's on the text mesh pro user form um, the point of the video is to I this is the first implementation of the sprite tag feature this will pave the way to also be able to mix and match different fonts within the same text object uh, I'm looking for feedback right now on uh, the usability the editors and the way you do that I'd like to also make the sprite uh, feature work with unity's uh, sprite packer so you don't have to include all of them in the same texture but instead reference them by using uh, if I go back by using the packing tag and I'd like to be able to make that work so you could keep them separate as opposed to inside of a single texture so anyway so that's it for this demo uh, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post and thank you for watching